Hello, my loop friends. Welcome to Live Loopers. I'm Alex, and this is a video that is now its own video, but it used to be part of a second video. There are two koala sampler vase videos that are releasing today on the same day. Uh, you can watch both, or if you are just interested in how to use koala, or if you're already a longtime user of koala and looking for some tips on possibly how to use it better, uh, this is a good video for that. I go through uh, my process of making sounds because I have been making a lot of sounds lately. The whole month of March was just full of making some cool sounds. And so uh, in this video, I'll show you how I've been doing it. My looping and finger drumming friends appearing right here on your screen is Koala Sampler. Hopefully you are already familiar. If you're not, it is what is, in my view, just the greatest and easiest way to make a little brief audio clip recordings into your iPad so that you can uh, replay those in interesting, fun ways and make all kinds of cool sound textures and stuff. Uh, one of the most important things to know about Koala, uh, I will tell you, and you, many of you, maybe most of you, will have already known this for a long time. I'm telling you anyway, because just in case you don't know it, it is one of the most important things to know about Koala, which is that it has uh, several different recording modes, or it has uh, three things. When you touch this little thing that says mic right here, uh, there's three options that pop up, and you need to be familiar with at least the top two of them. Three options that pop up are recording from mic. That is the way that it's already set up. That's by default. It will be recording from the iPad microphone. Uh, the other one says uh, resample from the app. You definitely should know about that and how to do it. I'm going to get to that in a second. And the third one says import a file in case you want to uh, make audio samples on a PC, laptop, some other means of making it, but you still want to import it into Koala. That's cool. I'm not going to be doing any of that today, but that's a great third option to have. But in terms of uh, recording from the mic and then resampling it from the app, uh, that is the process by which I make my sounds. By default, it is set up to record from the mic, so I am going to show you how you do that. Uh, you just hold down a pad, and then I am going to just pluck, uh, I mean just snap the um, mic. I don't recommend that you do that to your iPad. I'm just doing it to mine for demonstration purposes, but uh, here we go, holding down record. Okay. And uh, when I made that little teeny snap, it uh, made a little recording of that snap. When I press this edit button right here, it shows you that sound wave, the waveform of that snap. And then you can trim and zoom in on it. And then you can also uh, use your tools to bounce that down, which means to re-record so that only uh, that portion is showing. And you can change things like the volume. I'm going to raise the volume on it, and I'm going to lower the pitch on it quite a bit, and I'm going to zoom in even further, just have this much of it, and now I'm going to bounce it down again. Okay, so now whenever I touch this pad, it sounds like which is on its way to being a reasonably okay bass drum. Um, and I think if you just raise the volume and pitch it down a little bit more, you know, it's a decent bass drum. And so by manipulating these sounds, like before you even get into a re-recording inside the app itself, uh, you can get some good sound recordings. So uh, this is just an abbreviation of the whole process, but just for keeping things quick, I'm going to move uh, this bass drum thingy where, that I made over to where I usually keep bass drums, move this to where I usually keep snare drums, and I'm going to just pitch this up a lot until it's a little bit more like a snare drum, uh, which it might never be. 
but you can use your imagination and see that if I recorded a sound that sounded more like a snare drum, I would have the ability to just... So just with that set of tools and nothing else, uh, you can go around field recording uh, all the different sounds in your house and have a good time uh, forever. But, once you realize that you can uh, record and re-record and resample your samples, uh, then you have this performance screen over here at your disposal. So we're going to go back to samples and uh, tap the edit so that we can see this uh, mic option again. And change it to resample from app. Then we are going to go over to Perform, which has this hold button that allows you to, you can press the hold button so that you can change any of these uh, effects settings. And so just for example, I'm going to put reverb on it and a little bit of uh, bit crushing. There are uh, 16 of these different effects that you can use in combination with each other. So I'm going to go back over and show you how that now sounds a little bit different. And if you would like to update your sample so that it sounds like that, because you like that better than the original way it was, then you can just uh, go in and uh, tap one of your pads and then tap that sound to re-record it. You will notice it's not uh, in any danger of picking up my voice anymore. Uh, now it is just only listening inside of the app. And so when I did all that, the only thing it recorded was just when I touched that one pad, or the only thing that actually generated a waveform was the touching of that one pad, because that's the only thing I did that made the iPad make any sound. So I'm going to trim this and increase the volume and then bounce it down. And then when we go over to perform and untap this hold button, then we can go back to our samples and see that uh, one of them is our dry sample where we didn't have any adjustments. And one of them is our affected sample where we put the reverb on it. And also, all of these pads will sound for as long as you hold them. If you just tap them real quick, it uh, does not sound out the whole entire sound. And if you want that to not be the case, if you want to just be able to tap it and have the whole sound sound out, then there is an option which is called One Shot. Tap that, and then now this pad has been altered so that as soon as it gets a tap, it's going to uh, continue to play until you touch another pad. So I have switched it back to recording from the mic uh, because I would like to just tell you that during the whole month of March, uh, I started the first few days where I was recording samples, just uh, taking whatever I could find as a striker, usually like a wooden serving spoon or um, sometimes like an actual drum mallet or whatever I could find, and just hitting all kinds of objects, uh, metal, resonant, reverberating objects, and uh, you know, deep couch cushiony boom kind of objects and whatever you know, just all the objects. Uh, but then eventually there comes a point where you've sort of struck every object in your house and you're thinking and you're trying to think outside the box and expand your envelope and stretch your mind and like, you know, what makes a great sound and, you know, you've gone and recorded the garbage truck and you come to the realization that uh, one thing that makes a lot, a whole lot of really interesting and different sounds, like a, just a huge range of sounds, is your face. Uh, and so then you just sort of go into this weird zone and I'll spare you a lot of it, but um, if you, there's like, there's one challenge to it. Uh, one challenge to it is that there's this thing called feeling self-conscious. 
uh, but you have the benefit of the fact that uh, no one really is going to see you do it. Um, me, I'm about to do it on a video in front of you. Guys. Yeah. But anyway, um, if you can get over that, like, you know, self-consciousness thing, then all kinds of sounds can be your playground, your start. Like, as soon as you realize that you can switch over and resample from inside the thing and then use all of those different effects, then the sounds coming in are just raw material. They're not like, you know, prior to that, you kind of had to, like, record and re-record and re-record and re-record until you get the sound just perfect uh, but you know now you realize that oh that's just like the startup material and who knows where it's gonna go from there after you just mangle those sounds for a while so the input sounds can be anything it might not even really even matter that much uh, just you know you tap a thing and you just like wow <coughs> and it recorded all of that it made like a really big waveform of dumb sounds that i just made but uh those are just your raw materials and you just comb through that to see uh is there any like brief seconds of something interesting sonically that happened with it within all of that things and also you can uh uh, duplicate the waveform really easily by just uh, tapping it and sliding it over to other pads so I made two copies just like that very easy and uh, I am going to listen through that first one uh, and I am not going to be self-conscious even one little bit because I'm used to this nonsense yeah so that's a little bit of an interesting sound. We're just going to start with that. And uh, boost the volume on it a little bit. And try just different pitches to see if anything improves or makes it any better. I almost like that. Uh, so we are going to now switch over to recording inside the app. Let's take the edit menu down for a second and switch over. And now uh, I am going to go over to perform and start making adjustments and keep making adjustments until I get something that I love. <laughs> If you're wondering why did he say there's 16 different effects and all I see is eight, uh, there is a thing called vanilla and a thing called strawberry, and each one of those has eight. You can dig in and play for a very long time, but I don't have a long time, uh, so I am just going to go with that, and I'm going to hold down a pad and record into it. Another thing that is cool to know is that you can uh, turn on this one shot and turn on this thing that says loop and then you can continually listen back. You can have a looping playback that can uh, let you manipulate those different effects. Okay, turn off the hold and turn off the loop. And the last koala tip that I will give out, I think, is that uh, I was looking for, oh, I wish there was some way you can, like, fade out the end of different samples. And uh, there actually is. Uh, you can go to this thing that's called release, and uh, you can adjust until you hear the sound that you want. That's probably close to what I want. And
And that's the kind of interesting sounds that can come out of your face, even though they no longer sound like they came out of your face, uh, but they did. So that is what March was like for me, uh, making all kinds of awesome sounds in Koala. You just, there's just a world of sound to be discovered, just waiting for you to just take bits and pieces of sound and mangle them, mash them, and put them together and split them apart and everything. Uh, if you uh, liked this video, please leave a like. If you know anybody who needs to see this video, please share it with them. If you have any questions, please leave comments with your questions and I'll have, be happy to answer them or if you have any comments or whatever. Uh, if you feel you need to be subscribed here, that's cool. You could, There's a subscribe button. It's free. Just subscribe. And um yeah please do uh, enjoy your koala journey please uh, feel free to share anything cool that you make with what uh, I have made and uh, loop on <laughs>